Good morning, I'm Dr. Austin. In today's video, I'll be telling you about modes of nutrition. Now, this is a continuation of um, a previous video we saw on um, nutrition, the very first part of nutrition where I talked about food substances. Now, in terms of mode of nutrition, there are two main modes of nutrition and they are the autotrophic mode and the heterotrophic mode. Auto, self, trophic, feeding. Autotrophs are organisms that feed themselves in that they manufacture their own food. And these are essentially the plants and some microorganisms. Now, autotrophic nutrition is also called holophytic nutrition. And it means, therefore, that autotrophs can also be called holophytes. Now, because they make their own food, we call them producers. Now, on the other side, we have organisms that do not produce their own food. So we call them consumers. So the consumers wait for the producers to make food and then grab such food from them. Now, these producers, what do they make their food from? From inorganic raw materials like carbon dioxide, and water but to bring carbon dioxide and water together to form food they need energy remember the process of respiration respiration involves breaking down food to release energy so it means that in the process of making food some energy must have been put into it and it is such energy that is released in the process of respiration so energy is required to make food energy is required to bring co2 and water together to make food now where do these guys get such energy from well there are some of them that get their energy from the sun from sunlight so we say that they are photosynthetic autotrophs and then there are some that do not get their energies from sunlight instead they get their energy from simple chemical reactions we say they are chemosynthetic autotrophs now examples of photosynthetic autotrophs are the green plants green plants get their energy from the sun and they use such energy to make food for us then the chemosynthetic autotrophs those ones that require um chemical reactions and examples are microorganisms like the iron bacteria, sulfur bacteria, um, nitrobacter, nitrosomonas. They carry out simple reduction and oxidation reactions and from these reactions they get the energy needed to make food. So those are the chemosynthetic autotrophs as opposed to the photosynthetic autotrophs. But in any case, they are both autotrophs, they are self-feeders, they make their own food. Now for the heterotrophic organisms, the consumers, the ones that do not produce but only feed, there are some of them that feed on the autotrophs. They depend directly on autotrophs. They feed directly on autotrophs to meet their energy demands or their energy requirements and these ones are called herbivores so herbivores are heterotrophs that feed on plants then we have another group called the carnivores carnivores are heterotrophs that feed on fellow heterotrophs so animals that feed on flesh animals that feed on fellow animals remember no animal is an autotroph so if Carnivores feed on fellow animals. It means that carnivores feed on fellow heterotrophs. Then there are some other heterotrophs that can feed both ways. They can feed on autotrophs, they can feed on heterotrophs. They feed on virtually anything. We call them omnivores. Now an example of herbivores, you have things like um, sheep, you have cattle. These feed exclusively on plants. Then you have carnivores like the lions. They feed strictly on flesh. Then you have the omnivores. We are omnivores. We feed on plant materials. We feed on animal materials. Then the cockroach is an excellent example of omnivores. Beyond plant and animal materials, cockroaches can feed on virtually anything they find. Then we have the detritivores. Detritivores feed on plant and animal materials when they are dead. That is dead remains of plants or dead remains of animals. Such dead remains of plants or animals are called detritus. 
So detritus feeders are detritivores. They don't feed on living materials. They feed on dead materials, specifically rotten or um, yeah, rotting now as in R O T T I N G. So materials that are decaying. That's what they feed on. Detritivores feed on dead, decaying organic matter. They can include um, things like earthworms. Earthworms are very good examples of detritivores. They feed on dead organic matter. They consume them, you know, whole in large amounts. You also have some organisms that feed on feces. Yes, feces is an example of detritus that is dead decaying organic matter. And such organisms are said to be coprophagous. So a coprophagous organism is an organism that feeds on feces. And um, a very good example of that is the dung beetle. The dung beetle. Dung beetles feed on feces. Then we also have rabbits. Rabbits feed on feces. They feed on their own feces. Because, um, okay, let's leave the details of that. But just know that they eat, they reingest their own feces. So they're also coprophagous. Then what about litter? Dead um, plant materials, fallen leaves, um, rotting wood. They're all examples of detritus. And anything that feeds on them will be called a detritivore. Then there's this term, um, decomposer. Decomposer. What is a decomposer? A decomposer is close to or very closely related to a detritivore. But here's the difference. A decomposer does not feed directly on this dead organic matter. What decomposers do is to digest or break down this um, dead organic matter externally outside their bodies and then absorb the nutrients from what they have broken down. So it's more like we're saying for the detritivores, the they take in this dead organic matter and utilize it in the whole form, in the natural form. But for the decomposers, they break these things down outside. After breaking them down, they absorb the nutrients from them. Now, classical examples of decomposers are fungi and bacteria. So outside the fungi and bacteria, other organisms that feed on dead organic matter should just be regarded as detritivores. Now look at this organism, the vulture. The vulture is known to be a scavenger. The vulture feeds on dead materials, dead animals especially. Now in that case, if you consider the real habit of the vulture, how it feeds on you know, dead flesh, does it digest the flesh outside? No. So the vulture is not a decomposer, instead it is a detritivore. So detritivores, any organisms that feed on dead organic matter. And I said the decomposers are not in that class. They are different. Okay, having mentioned that, um, for the heterotrophic organisms, they actually have some specific modes of nutrition that I like to list. So this is based on what they feed on. This classification is based on what they feed on. But some other time we're talking about how they feed Alright, so under heterotrophic nutrition, you may begin to see terms like holozoic nutrition. Holozoic. Some textbooks say that holozoic is another term for heterotrophic. Well, not exactly. Now, an organism that is heterotrophic is simply an organism that is not autotrophic. It doesn't produce its own food. However, it gets food, we don't bother, but we just know it is heterotrophic. Now, the holozoic organisms are those organisms that take in food by mouth or by an opening. We call them the holozoic organisms. Now, these holozoic organisms, we said they take in food by mouth. And the man belongs here. Man is holozoic. So you see now, in the other classification, man is an omnivore based on what he eats. And then here, based on the fact that he takes in food through a mouth, we see that he is holozoic. Then, beyond that, we also have the ones we call parasitic. Some organisms are parasitic in the sense that they do not exactly work for food. They wait for you to get food and then they come taking parts of it. Now, so these parasites can be animals and can be plants. So there are some plants that are parasites. Uh, plants like um, dodder. The dodder plant is a parasite. 
We also have the witch weed. It's a parasite. We have um, Lorantus. Lorantus is also called mistletoe. So mistletoe or Lorantus is also a plant that behaves as a parasite. And these plant parasites, how do they get their nutrients? Now let's say this is the bark of a tree and one of these parasites is to get nutrients from the tree. It attaches itself to the tree and then by means of something like a siphon, it goes straight into the sap of the tree from where it can begin to collect nutrients. Now this device that it puts into the tree to use to collect nutrients is called a hostorium. Hostorium. The plural of hostorium is hostoria. So hostoria are used by parasitic plants to obtain nutrients from their hosts. Now some animals too are parasites. These animal parasites, there are some of them that stay outside the body. So we call them ectoparasites. Ectoparasites. And then we have the endoparasites. Now what's the difference between these two? Endoparasites operate from within, whereas ectoparasites operate from the outside. Examples of ectoparasites are things like lice, mites, um, ticks, bugs. They are ectoparasites. Then for the endoparasites, the majority of them are worms. The round worm, hook worm, the flat worms, like um, the blood fluke, the liver fluke, are all examples of endoparasites. So we have the parasites. And then um, it may be very important to mention this group of organisms. I'm sure you'd learn something here. This is in a past question too from Jam. There are some plants that we refer to as carnivorous. The carnivorous plants. Carnivorous plants are also called insectivorous plants. Why are they called carnivorous? Yes, because they can actually consume, as it were, animals. And then what kind of animals can they consume? You and I know. No plants can consume us. They consume insects. So we call them insectivorous plants. Now, when we say they consume insects, that is not to make them holozoic, like they eat insects. They don't have a mouth. They don't have an opening for taking in the insects and, you know, digesting them. But these kind of plants are actually autotrophs. They produce their own food like other plants but they grow in soils that are deficient in nitrogen. So because the soil is deficient in nitrogen, after producing food, these plants usually require nitrogen, especially for making protein. See, carbohydrates contain carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, like we mentioned in the previous video, but to make proteins, you need nitrogen. Now, these plants live in soil that lacks nitrogen, and that means they can't make proteins. So in order to make proteins, they must get nitrogen from somewhere, and that's why they need the insects. So these plants trap insects, break them down to extract nitrogen, not for their entire um, nutritional requirements. So they get their nutrients as autotrophs. Jam asked, what is the mode of nutrition in carnivorous plants? I tell you, the answer remains autotrophic. They are autotrophs, they are plants, primarily. Now, examples of carnivorous plants include sundew. Sundew is also called drosera. Then we have things like the pitcher plant, the pitcher plant of Nephentis. We have um, the vinous flytrap. And then we have um, plants like the um, bladder warts, the butter warts, and so on. There are several examples of carnivorous plants, plants that consume, as it were, animals or feed on insects. So having mentioned these modes of nutrition, I'd like to say a word on photosynthesis. The meaning